In today's tutorial, let's do a fun little craft together. This is pretty as a picture crochet frame that you can use for the Christmas tree, a fridge magnet, or whatever that you have in mind. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do pretty as a picture crochet frame just like you see here. These are a two inch uh, frame and they use Kaboni rings and they are rings that you can find in a craft store but myself I was having trouble being able to find those rings and I'll show you the, how I made mine here in cardboard. What we can do today is that we can make the rings and then we can just do the crochet around it. There's only two rounds and then you can just grab a little photograph if you want. I just printed one and then you can place it in behind. So let me show you my examples that I have. I know I'm a fan of my kitty cat so I now have a little uh, one for kitty and what I can just do is I can uh, glue a fridge magnet to the back of this or I could put a little a tie on the top and hang it to my Christmas tree. You can do a lot of great things uh, with these things. Also the man of my life. Here we go Diva Dan of course and then of course I have to put myself in there and the one that I'm gonna be working on today is Daniel and I in Alaska on the crochet cruise so I'm gonna place that with inside the frame. So let me tell you how to make this frame and then we're gonna go on from that point. So for myself I was at the craft store last night. I could not find Kaboni rings anywhere. It may be pronounced Kabone as well and what I decided to do I was kind of frustrated by the end of it and I thought I'm gonna make it myself. So what I did is I took a cereal box and it's just cardboard from a cereal box so it's a little bit stiff and the reality is it's just gonna hang as an ornament or whatever so it doesn't need a lot of strength for me and uh, once you get crocheting around it it's pretty good. So I used the top of a cup in order to trace around onto the cardboard of the two inches so I measured across the top of two inches and then once I did that then I went back and then I tr uh, just kind of eyed it up and I did a little bit of a uh, of a circle. You can see it's kind of rough looking and then what I did from that point is that I cut this out of the cardboard and now I have a Kaboni ring just like so. So then what I went is that I went and did the photography of this and what I did is then I put the ring down on top of the photography like so and I traced around it. Okay, so I traced around it. So when it goes into a picture frame that it will like literally come up in the middle. Do you see like that? So you wanna pay attention that your subject has to be kind of in, a, in the center point because there's a bit of thickness to the yarn here. So if you're too close to the edge you might actually over cover yourself just like so. Isn't she cute? So what we're gonna do today is that I'm gonna have you either get your Kaboni rings ready or you can make them out of cardboard. I think this would be a cool uh, crafting project for Christmas. I'm a huge fan of homemade for Christmas and what you can just do and my wife and I used to do this way back in the, uh, in the beginning of uh, my adult years is that we would take a photo and we would put it on the tree and then next year we would take another photo and put another photo and then over the years you would see how that we were growing older as a couple together with all the photographs and when you open up your Christmas box at the end or at the beginning of the season when you set up your decorations you kind of have nostalgia. You say oh my god I forgot about that, I forgot about this and then your tree ends up being a tree of memories which is really kind of cool. So you can crochet enough of these for your entire family if you wanted to. If you wanted to really start a new tradition and then next year you can just uh, change the photos as your uh, grandchildren or your children or even you are getting older and put that on the tree. So make it your own, make it your own memories. So let's uh, begin. I'm gonna show you how to do the crochet element and today we're gonna be using uh, Lily Sugar and Cream. It's a cotton yarn so it will be very durable to last few years. You can also use Bernat Handicrafter yarn as well. They're 100% cotton by our friends at Yarnspirations.com. So what we're gonna do then is that we're going to crochet around the frame. So let me pull the frame up and so we're just gonna crochet around the frame and then what you can just do is take the photograph and then glue it to the back and if you wanna put an additional piece of cardboard to strengthen that or use photography paper or photographic paper it'll be stronger than this as well. So um, let's begin and let's start on how to make the frames. So whether you're using a Kaboni ring or Kaboni ring um, you can uh, just use this as cardboard as well. It's up to you. You're a crafter. You can figure it out. So if you don't have access to that or you wanna save money make this an afternoon craft with the kids for a rainy day. It's kinda fun too. So get them involved and let's have a good time. So let's start off with the slip knot first. You are going to need that ring before you can go any further and put the slip knot onto the hook. This is a five millimeter size H and again Lily Sugar and Cream. So what I want you to do is that I want you to insert this through the ring and just yarn up over and because this one's cardboard you do want to be a little bit gentle but you don't have to be too crazy about it. It will once you get it settled it will be good and just slip stitch it. So just pull through and through. 
that does not count as anything on this. I want you to lay down this straggler, okay, just over top of the ring so you go over top and you need to do 41 single crochets around this ring and you're gonna think, is it gonna get all the way around? Absolutely and in fact you may have to shift things because there's a lot of yarn going into this ring. So let's just do five together. So you're just gonna insert underneath the ring, grab it, pull it through and then pull through two. So that was one out of 41. Okay, so you need to do 41 single crochets. So into the ring, again, see how the straggler is trapped in underneath? So you're gonna get that stuck underneath so you don't have to worry about that at the end. So this is two and three, four and you're thinking, oh, it's gonna looking kinda loose. It will tighten up, you watch. This is five. So as you get more and more, and you got 41, so this is only five. So think about it, you have to get 20 all the way halfway point. So it's gonna start compressing together as you get more and more in there. So please go all the way to 41 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. I now have 41 in here and you'll notice you would have had to shift things around and if anything is not, if you got a gap uh, for example right there, just shift things around and things will work out. So I want you to slip stitch to the beginning, the, the first one that you did. Just slip stitch it and we're gonna begin the next round. So the next round is really quite simple and I found with myself the first time I ever did this project I was a little bit slow and I was a little, um, how do you say, extra cautious but now that this is my fourth one that I'm working on I'm finding that I'm a lot more relaxed than I was when I started. So skipping over to the first one or, or to the third one so skip the first two so one and two and I want you to double crochet into the third one over four times. So one and two, three and four and then what we have to do is skip two, one and two, slip stitch into the third and then begin again. So skip two and double crochet four times into the third one over. That's all you have to do. It's that simple all the way around. So this is two, three and you can still adjust things if you're getting gapping spaces happening. So don't worry about that at that point. So skip the next two, slip stitch into the third. Okay, skip the next two, double crochet four times into the next. Please do that all the way around in the same fashion. So I'm coming up all the way back around and all you're just gonna do then, you skip two and then you slip stitch to the very first one. Okay, so that's it. That's all this pattern is. So what we're gonna do then is that we're gonna trim the yarn and I'm gonna show you how to hide in the ends. So just trim it long enough you can put this through a darning needle. The one that you were covering is probably hanging out the back right now unless you covered it all the way. So you're gonna do that. So let's pull this yarn through. So just uh, loop it around and push, pull it through and pull tight and snug it. So this is the back of it. You can tell the back because see the front has a raised lip and the back is more facing downward. So what you wanna just do is grab a darning needle and what we're gonna do from this point is that we're gonna hide in this loose end. Now if you wanna do a tie, an extra tie, you can just uh, keep the string, tie it in a way that it, you can use it for a hanger or you can just um, use a Christmas ornament decoration like those silver things that you can just clip onto the outside of one if you wanted to want it to hang it and of course if you want to apply um, a fridge magnet you can do that as well um, to be able to do that. So you can pick up magnets at craft stores. So keeping the yarn to the back side of it, if you go in and out three times this will never fall out on you. Just go into different spaces every time you go in. So this is the third time through and I'm going to, to snug it up and I'm going to cut it. So let's turn it over and see how we did. So if there's any uh, gapping spaces like that, just shift things around. Chances are you got, it might be more heavier in yarn in one section. So just, just kinda eye it up. So now all you're just gonna do is grab a photograph and like I already told you, so this one's already ready to go. You can see that there, the frame is kind of out of sync there but that doesn't matter because when I did it, you can just glue it to the inside just like this. So what I would do if I were you and what I did for myself is that I took a hot glue gun and I just hot glue gun just around the edge on the back here and I placed the photograph down on the on the table and I looked straight down and all I went down is and I went boom like this and then I picked it up immediately. So I just went boom like that and it stuck and I turned it over and I just kind of lightly pressed on the edges just like so so you can see that it's all the way around just like that. Okay, so that's all you need to do for this if you want to make a project like this. So it's a lot of fun. It's a really kind of a, a memory more than anything and if you wanna apply a fridge magnet to it, just apply it to the top of this 
probably right not to the paper itself but an actual just to the to the frame itself because it's stronger and therefore you can have something that will hang on your fridge to give you some great memories as you're making your coffee or tea in the morning. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. This is Pretty as a Picture Crochet Frame and have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.